Okay, guys, so let's uh, go over a stoic problem. So we got 3.13 here, and it says the decomposition of KClO3 is sometimes used to produce small amounts of O2 in the lab. Okay, how many grams of O2 can be prepared from 4.5 grams of KClO3? So like I said last time with my uh, example with meth and stuff like that, the point of stoichiometry is to figure out how much of one chemical you can make given a certain amount of another chemical. So what we always want to do is when you start stoichiometry, you just want to identify what your starting value is and what compound you want to end up with, okay? So on your papers, I just want you guys to write down, um, obviously the number 13, and I want you guys to just identify the chemical that you're starting with in this problem and the chemical that you want to end up with. Okay, so take about... Uh, about 30 seconds to figure that out. Okay, using the info here, just figure out what chemical you're starting with and what chemical you're looking for. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Raise your hand, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So we are gonna start. We are gonna be starting with KClO3 because it says we are going to be using 4.5 grams of KClO3. Okay, can someone raise your hand and tell me what we're trying to make? Yeah, all wrong. We are trying to find grams of all wrong. Okay. All right. So yeah, basically what we're trying to do in this problem is hypothetically, if we're in a lab, we're trying to start off with 4.5 grams of KClO3. And we're trying to figure out, hey, how much oxygen can we make using this amount of starting compound? Does that make sense, guys? Okay. So that's what we're looking for. So what we want to do for stoichiometry is we want to convert um, this 4.5 into different units of measurement to end up with grams of O2. So we're going to start off just right off the bat by writing down our starting compound, which is 4.5 grams of KClO3. Okay. And then we're going to do a series of dimensional analysis to end up with grams of oxygen. All right, now, before we do that, I want you guys to take a look at the chemical equation. Um, is it balanced? No, it is not balanced, unfortunately. So whenever you see a chemical equation and there's no coefficients in front of it, you guys are going to have to balance it. So let's see if you guys are comfortable doing that. So I'm going to give you guys about two minutes. I want you guys to figure or work with the person next to you and balance this chemical equation. After that, we can start um, doing the stoichiometry. Okay, so take about two minutes to balance. Okay, but for the coefficients, you should get two, two, and three. Everybody got that? Yeah, great job, guys. Okay, so after you balance, um, the next thing that you wanna do is, I always recommend finding the molar masses of the chemical you start with and the chemical you end with. So if you guys notice, we, have, we start with KClO3 and O2, right? So what I want you guys to do now is take about a minute to find the molar mass of each of those, okay? Find the molar mass of KClO3 and for O2. So take about a minute to do that. We'll double check, and then we can finally start our actual stoichiometry. All right, so let's find the molar mass for these compounds. So um, is it okay if I just give the molar mass to you guys? Okay, let's uh, go through them just so we don't have... If you have if you still need help finding molar mass, please let me know so I can help you out. Um, for KClO3, you should get 122.55 grams per mole. Okay, and then for O2, it's going to be 32 grams per mole. Okay. Everybody good with that? Okay. And again, all you got to do is just go to the periodic table and add up the molar masses for each element. Okay, okay now we can do the actual stoichiometry. So... What we want to do is we want to follow a couple steps. So first thing you want to do is you want to turn the grams of KClO3 into moles. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a quick fraction. And then we're going to get rid of grams of KClO3 by putting it on the bottom. And then we're going to turn it into moles of KClO3 by putting that on the top. Okay, so that's the first thing that you want to do. Okay. 
And if you have another, you know, way of setting this up that makes sense to you, you can do it your way. I'm just showing you the way that I was taught. And I think most people is right. Okay. So this first fraction, if you guys notice, there's grams and moles on the same fraction, right? And so we're going to get the numbers for this fraction from the molar mass, which we just found. So we're going to take the molar mass of KClO3. So if you take a look at the fraction, where should I put the 122, the top or the bottom? Uh, yeah, you want to put it on the bottom because that's where grams is. Okay. The molar mass always goes next to the grams and it's per mole. So it'll be one mole on the top. Okay. And the reason why we do that is so that we can cancel out the grams of KCLO3. All right. All right. All right. So we got rid of grams of KCL3, but we're not there yet, right? We need to get it to grams of O2. So we're going to set up another fraction. And this time we're going to convert moles of KCL03. And we're going to turn it into the moles of the chemical we're looking for. So moles of O2. And this fraction has moles and moles. And if you guys remember, a chemical equation is just the ratio of each compound you need in a reaction. So we're gonna get the numbers for the second fraction from the balanced equation. So what we wanna do is we wanna look for these chemicals, find out the coefficients, the numbers in front of them, and just put them on the fraction. So what number is in front of O2 in the balanced equation? Yeah, three. So we put a three next to moles of O2. And then what number is next to KClO3? Two. Yeah, two right there. So we put a two on the bottom. Okay. All right, so far so good, guys? Okay. All right, so we're almost done. We got rid of grams of KClO3. We got rid of moles of KClO3. Now we just need to turn moles into grams of O2, right? That's what we're looking for. So we just need to set up one last fraction. And for this fraction, we put moles on the bottom. So moles of O2 on the bottom. And we put grams of O2 on the top. Okay, that way, the moles of O2 can cancel out. And then for this one, if you notice, grams and moles on the same fraction. So we get the numbers from the molar mass of O2. All right, so for this one, um, O2 is 32 grams per mole. So where should we put the 32 on this fraction? Yeah, the top, because that's where grams is. So if you notice, it's the opposite of the first one. It's going to be on the top. And then on the bottom, we put one. And that's how we can set up the dimensional analysis to turn grams of KClO3 to moles of case or to, to grams of O2. Okay, that's it. That's pretty much how we set that up. Easy peasy. All right. So let's punch this into our calculator, see what we get. So again, we're going to start with 4.5. We multiply the numbers on top, divide by everything on the bottom. We can ignore the one. So the first fraction has a 122.55 on the bottom, so we divide it. Second fraction has a 3 on top, so we multiply by 3, divide by 2, and then we multiply by 32. And so our final answer is 1.76. And our unit of measure will be grams of O2. Okay. And there you go. Basically, what this is telling us is that if you start off with 4.5 grams of KClO3, you can make 1.76 grams of O2. That's what it's telling us. Okay. All right. So I know that was a lot of stuff. But do you guys have any questions? To ring a bell from your previous chem classes. Okay. So one little method I like to use um, personally to remember if I'm setting up the uh, fractions correctly, I want you guys to take a look at the top of the fractions. Okay. If you look at the tops of all the fractions, your starting one is grams, right? That's a G, right? If you look at the second one, the top is moles, so it's M. The third one is M. And the last one is G. So if you remember this right here, you can remember what goes on the top. So if you make the sound for this, this is gamumaga, right? So if you remember that noise, gamumaga, 
you can always check if your stoichiometry is correct. Okay? So I want you guys to say that with me. Gumumaga. Louder. Gumumaga. Perfect. Yeah. Now you guys will never forget that. Just remember gumumaga and your stoichiometry will always be set up perfectly. All righty. So um, let's move on to 3.14. Thank you. Is he here? No, he's not in this class. Not in the class. Yeah. Okay. Hi. It's, uh, Are you here for AP chemistry? No. Wrong class I, I wish. I'm kidding. Dude, I've been so bad at All right. So for 3.14, let me scroll down a little. Okay. It says solid, a little, solid lithium hydroxide is used in space vessels to remove CO2 exhaled by astronauts. So I'm gonna stop right there and let me just write the chemical equation, okay? So lithium hydroxide is made up of obviously lithium and hydroxide, right? We just need to make sure this ionic compound is balanced. So what's the MCI for lithium? Plus one. And what about hydroxide? Minus one, okay? Hydroxide should be the easiest one for you guys to remember because it's me, it's O. And I'm a little negative, so minus. So you guys can always remember hydroxide. Just think of me and how I made your lives a little bit negative, okay? So plus one and minus one, they balance each other out. So this is going to be the chemical formula for lithium hydroxide, okay? We'll move on to carbon dioxide. We know that carbon dioxide is CO2. Hey, that's just one that we should know from biology. And then we'll move on to the second sentence. It says the hydroxide reacts with the carbon dioxide. So we can write down that the hydroxide, okay? So lithium hydroxide reacts with CO2. So if something reacts with something, it's the same thing as plus. Okay. And then it's going to form solid lithium carbonate and water, okay? So I'll give you guys the chemical formula for water, H2O. See if you guys can write the chemical formula for the last product, lithium carbonate. Okay. I'll give you guys like 30 seconds to do that. And then once you and then after that, I'll show you guys the formula for lithium carbonate. And then I'll have you guys start the balancing and the stoichiometry. Okay. So take a second to find the formula for lithium carbonate. Okay, so for lithium, we said the MCI was plus one. Okay, hopefully you found carbonate CO3 2 minus. Okay. So hey, I'll see you. So how many lithiums do we need to balance out the carbonate? Two. two. So your formula for lithium carbonate should be Li2CO3. See, he told you. Yes. Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. So again, whatever method works best for you, um, you can use that to find the, uh, the formula. Okay. So now that we have the chemical formula, uh, you can do all the stoichiometry. So I'll give you guys about five minutes. I'll give you a lot of time this time to balance the equation. Find the molar masses, do the dimensional analysis, and get your final answer. Okay, so take some time to practice this. Um, I'm going to be going a little slower this lecture just so you guys have time to really practice the stoic because it is really important for chem. And then we'll go over it together. All right, back. Over it. Okay, so um, I gave you the coefficient for the balancing. So it should be two in front of LiOH. Um, your starting compound, um, you should see that it's going to be one gram of lithium hydroxide. So this is going to be where you start. Okay, and then you want to end up with grams of carbon dioxide. So you're actually going to end up here. Okay, so this is just to kind of show you, you don't always need to go to the other side of the arrow. Stoichiometry can be used to compare both reactants with one another. Okay, so our starting value is one gram of lithium hydroxide. And I'm going to go through this a little bit quickly. So if you have any questions or if I did something wrong, please let me know. Um, and then for the molar mass, you should get 23.95 grams of lithium hydroxide per one mole of LiOH, okay? Okay, we're gonna set up another fraction. On the bottom, we go two moles of lithium hydroxide. And on the top, we got one mole of CO2. Last fraction, one mole of CO2 should be 44 grams of CO2, okay? All right, did I make any mistakes? I hope not, because I'm just making this up as I go. I'm teaching you guys magic. 
All right, so this is going to be your final answer. Something close to that. Not for a while. Okay. Magnesium hydroxide, yeah. Or magnesium oxide, yeah. Later. Later in the future. Tomorrow. All right. You guys cool with that? Everybody all right with stoic? Okay. Okay. Um, so let's try one more problem before we move on to the next type of stoichiometry. Okay. So 3.15. So this one is another stoic problem where you have to figure out the um the formula. I'll kind of help you guys out and then I'll get you guys started, okay? So um it says propane is, and then the chemical formula. So fuel used for cooking and home heating. What's the mass of O2 consumed in the combustion of one gram of propane? That's C3H6, right? Yes. So I'll write that down for you guys. It should be C3H8. Okay? And that's going to be propane. It is reacting or combusting with O2, so oxygen gas. And then it's going to produce carbon dioxide, so CO2 plus water. Okay, so that's going to be your um, chemical formula. I'll give you guys about five minutes again to try to balance this and to do the stoichiometry. Um, the balancing numbers might get a little bit high, um, but I will give you a little hint. The highest coefficient is going to be five. Okay, so the highest number you'll get in front of the compounds is five. If you go higher than five, you messed up somewhere. Okay, so that's my hint. No, for this one. Okay, so I'll give you guys about five minutes to do that, and then we'll go over it together. All right, so we got the balancing down. Let's uh, set it up and finish up the stoichiometry. So you start with one gram of propane. Okay, and then you set it up with the molar mass. So you should get 44 grams of propane in every one mole. Okay. All right, we set up one more fraction. This time we're going to find the ratio between propane with oxygen. So you're going to put a five moles of oxygen on the top. And then one mole of oxygen is equal to 32 grams of oxygen. Okay. And then you solve all that out, and you should get about 3.64 grams of O2. Okay, something close to that, 3.6, 3.59, around there should be good, okay? Any questions on this? Do you ever do the Mr. Holmes neighborhood thing? Yeah. No. Never heard of it. We had this thing, I was ask that, we really. had this thing last year where, like, you know, with the Mr. Bones neighborhood, you were, like, on, on like, sorry, what's that, Bisa? Forty-four times five for which one? For the molar mass. Wait, wait, guys, can you be quiet for real quick? Hey, be quiet real quick. Sorry. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'll put in the calculator. Yeah. So um, you start with your starting value of one because one's the thing on the left, right? 44 is on the bottom. So one divided by 44, multiply that by five, and then by 32. And that, that's how you get that value. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page because stoichiometry gets or is very important to chemistry. At a certain point, like maybe in the middle of the year, I'm just going to assume that it's like natural for you guys to get this. And so I won't be going over every step with the stoic. It's just going to be assumed that you're comfortable doing it. Okay. All right. So let's uh, move on to the next type of stoichiometry. So stoichiometry... Um, is nice and easy when you only need to work with one number, okay? But unfortunately, life is not that simple, okay? So we're going to be talking about something called limiting reactants, or you might hear it as limiting reagents. So write that term down, limiting reactant, or you can write limiting reagent. Just know that they're the same thing. And I'll explain what that is in just a second.
った。<笑>
and we have our starting mass for our reactant. So the question is basically asking which one of these, CH4 or O2, which one is going to run out first? Okay, and so there's a lot of different ways to figure this out, um, but I'm gonna teach you the way I do it. So if you learned it differently from another teacher, you can do it that way. Um, but basically for me, I don't like using a lot of different methods. I'm not that smart. So I just like doing the same thing over and over again. So what you can basically do is you can just do stoichiometry twice. Okay, so one time you could start off the stoichiometry with 20 grams of CH4. And then the second time, you can just do stoichiometry by starting with 40 grams of O2. And then the same thing, you just want to figure out how many grams of H2O can you make with the CH4 and how many grams of H2O can you make with the 40 grams. And so you'll get two different answers. And all we need to do is compare the answers at the very end. So for now, that's kind of a lot. So for now, what I want you guys to do is take about two minutes, see if you can find the answer for how much H2O 20 grams of CH4 can make. So you guys do number one, I'll do number two, and then we can compare our answers at the very end and that'll tell us the limiting reagent, okay? So take about two minutes to solve number one, 20 grams of CH4, figure out how much water you can make with 20 grams of CH4, okay? Okay, so let's go over the answer for CH4. So for CH4, super simple, it should be 16 grams of CH4 per every one mole of CH4. And I'm sorry if my handwriting is dog. I've been told that a lot. Well, let's say dog. Yeah, that is dog. And I agree because it's pretty bad. What, why do I have dog in me? Is it because I'm Asian? Is that, is it because I'm Asian? Huh? Is that what you're trying to say? Dang, this is being recorded too. I got you. Okay. All right. Anyway, you should have got 45 grams of H2O. Good. Okay. So if you guys notice, um, you have two different answers, right? Um, let me just talk about what these numbers mean. Okay. The, the first one right here is basically saying, if you have 20 grams of CH4, you can make 45 grams of H2O. Okay. And the second calculation is saying, if you have 40 grams of O2, you can make 22.5 grams of H2O. Now we have two different values, so we need to pick which one is correct, okay? And the answer is always going to be the smaller one, okay? You will always make the smaller amounts of your compound. And so let's think back to the sandwich example, right? When we ran out of um, the bread, that means we can make a fewer number of sandwiches. So if we had 10 bread, we can make five sandwiches, right? But if we have seven pieces of ham, we could hypothetically make seven sandwiches, right? But we pick the smaller one because we're gonna run out of that compound first. So you always pick the smaller number. So the answer will be, we make 22.5 grams of H2O and the limiting reagent is going to be O2 and CH4 will be your excess. You're gonna run out of O2. And so you will not be able to make 45 grams because you're going to run out of one of the starting materials. Yeah. Could you, do, could you have done the same thing with CO2? Yeah, you could have done it as well with that. But I mean, the question is asking how many grams of water will be produced. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so technically, if it's just asking for limiting reagent, you can pick either one. Yeah. Good question. All right. Any other questions? I know this is kind of a weird topic or weird concept, um, but basically, just remember whatever you run out of first is your limiting reagent. And the smaller amount is going to be the product that you actually end up making. Okay. All right. So let's take a quick break. Uh, if you need to run to the restroom, we'll take a five minute break. You can, and then we will um, go do some more problems with this. Okay. So I have the answer up there. Um, so you guys get two different values for NH3. Um, now, which one is the correct value? Um, N2. N2. Yes, thank you. N2 is the limiting reagent because it makes a smaller value, which means we actually end up making 3.64 grams of NH3. Yes. That's correct. H2 is excess. Okay.
So on the important three B, one person asked like whether you could choose the center right, whether it's the law of the months of the mm -hmm. So you just have like, we're gonna get to how to solve find that in a bit. Yeah, you're a little bit ahead of me. Good question. All right. Any other questions? All right. Yeah. Um, Mr. Oh, if I send you the homework in the inbox, would you accept it? You can start on the bin next time you come. It's okay. Start on the bin when you come. We got stuff late. Uh probably. Okay. So I get for that homework as I so No, I think you have an excused absence. You should oh, Okay, like, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, if you have an excused absence, yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. All right. So, you guys want to know a funny story about this reaction? Okay, so, in, okay, I guess I won't tell it then. All right, moving on. So, um, this reaction is actually one of the most important reactions for human civilization. Um, because, um, do you guys know what the most, one of the most important elements is for plants nitrogen. nitrogen so nitrogen is extremely hard for plants to get because most of the nitrogen on earth is in the air as n2 but it's really hard to break so plants can't get nitrogen from there and so they need nitrogen from other sources like ammonia so somebody figured out that hey if we run this reaction with nitrogen gas which we have a lot of right in the air around the 74 percent is nitrogen and we have hydrogen, if we run this reaction, there's something called equilibrium, which we'll learn later in the year. But if we run that, we can make a lot of ammonia. And so because of that, Europe got a lot of food because they were able to fertilize their soil and grow a lot of food. It's good, right? However, some other smart people were like, hey, yeah. ammonia is poison. And then World War I started and they're like, hey, we can use this to make chemical weapons. And so because of this reaction, Europe was able to flourish because of agriculture. And then a lot of Europeans died because of trench warfare with chemical gas. Yeah, also, yes, that too. Did you watch the very video about that? No. So I have the answer for 3.18 up here. Um, so which one is the limiting reagent? AG. Yeah, AgNO3 is your limiting reagent because this is the one that runs out first. And we know that because smaller number. So that means we actually end up making one point, about four grams of AgNO3 or ZnNO3 too, okay? Does that part make sense? That's what we've been doing. All right, now that's the first part. The second part is asking how many grams of excess are left over? Now, in order to do this, what we have to do is basically figure out how much zinc is still left. Now, this is kind of a challenge because there's two grams of zinc, and this is reacting with the AgNO3, right? So zinc is disappearing, AgNO3 is disappearing, and then we run out of this guy. But we still have some of this left over. So the number has to be smaller than two. Yeah. So you you that is one of the steps. So let me get to that. So what we want to do is we want to take this number right here, okay? So we're going to write down 5.79. And we're actually going to subtract 1.39 from it. Okay, and the reason why we do that is because this right here, 5.79, is how much we could have made, right? So this is how much we could have made if we didn't run out of one of the ingredients, right? 1.39 is what we actually made. Does that make sense, the distinction between the two? Okay, 5.79, we could have made it if we didn't run out of silver nitrate, but we actually end up making 1.39. And so what the difference tells us, so the difference is going to be 4.4, uh, .4, and 4.4 .4 grams of zinc nitrate, this is what we did not make. Okay. Does that make sense, the difference between those three numbers? What you guys So that's not the excess. That We have to use this to find the excess. Exactly. Okay, so from there, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do more stoichiometry, but this is actually a lot easier. We're going to do stoichiometry with the amount that we did not make, 
and we're going to turn it into grams of zinc and that's going to tell us how much is left over okay so i think we're running out of time so i'll stop right there um if you guys want to try it out i will write down the answer and post a video and double check you guys can double check it but we'll pick it up from here next time that we meet okay yeah can you just say two over four or two times 4.4 5.9 instead of go on the back Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, what's up? It's a little bit off the top, not being a little bit off the top. Just it like where we're off the top. So it's the little to tiny uh, bit off the top. It's okay. I'm sure, you look fine. And she cut. Dude, look, 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 look. Hey, have a good one. That's pretty long, dude. No, it's not. Have a good day. Yeah, have a good one.